2017 has been a great year, and with that, a great year for games. We got the return of Nintendo with the Nintendo Switch, which saw the likes of games like Super Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild. PlayStation also had a really solid lineup with Horizon Zero Dawn, Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Xbox unveiled and released the Xbox One X, alongside some exclusive titles like Forza, and third-party titles were a hit or miss like usual. 2017 was an overall solid year, and 2018 looks to be even better, going to the Switch's second year and possibly the PS4's best year. Games that I'm looking forward to that didn't quite make the list go to Far Cry 5, Sea of Thieves, Yoshi for the Switch, State of Decay 2, and Monster Hunter World. Let's get into my top 10. One of the strongest showings at Microsoft's E3 conference last year was the reveal of a new Metro. Taking the series into a new direction with it being more open rather than linear this time around does have me a bit worried, but I'm open to the change. The game looked intriguing from the 5 minute gameplay demo we saw at E3 last year, and judging by the trailer at the Game Awards, the game seems to be coming along nicely. Judging by possible hints in the latest trailer, the game might come out as soon as August, which if true, could fill the summer void a lot of us usually have. From Call of Duty to Destiny, it's nice to have a different shooter to look forward to in 2018, and it's time for me to get caught up with the previous games. I think we can all agree EA had a very lackluster and mediocre E3 last year, but one game stood out to me and many others, A Way Out. A Way Out, developed by the studio known for Brothers of Tale of Two Sons, a game I personally enjoyed, is going for a more cooperative-esque game, which starts as a prison escape game, promises to deliver a campaign filled with a variety of things to do that will never have you feeling bored. All of the positive things that have been said sound right up my alley as pacing and games usually break or make the game for me. Joseph Ferris. Okay, can you swear here? Joseph Ferris has promised big things for A Way Out, and we only have to wait a little over two months before we get to play the game for ourselves. Especially for the fact that only one person has to buy the game and it's actually half price than a usual full game, there isn't much to be worried about here. I've got to admit, I don't feel too confident in Days Gone as of right now. The recent E3 gameplay demo restored some of my faith, but seeing as Ben seems absent for most of the year, only showing up at once a year at E3 has me very worried. Shuhei recently said the game has been pretty much completed and now they're working on fixing and ironing out the bugs, reassuring the game's release in 2018, so there is still some reason to be optimistic here. My excitement for the game is dying down, which is why it's only at number 8, but if Ben can finish off a promising showing at E3 and deliver the game we all want, I'll be more than happy. Sony Ben, don't let us down. It might not be high on the list, but I'm still looking forward to and intrigued by Days Gone. This past week, I finally beat Heavy Rain for the first time, and that has me craving Detroit ever so more. In an industry seemingly filled with open world games and games as a service, single player games aren't as common as I once remembered. And with that, Detroit stands out. We've known of the game's existence for a little over three years now, which has me praying this game will be worth it in the end, and from what I think, personally, I'm intrigued. My expectations aren't all positive though. David Cage has been known to be very hit or miss in terms of his writing, judging by the reception of Beyond Two Souls, so it's possible Detroit could be another sad story. Let's just hope the wait will be worth it when Detroit launches this spring, and not be another sad tale. Although I owned a DS when I was a kid, I never bought a Pokemon game as crazy as that might sound, so by far the biggest announcement at Nintendo's E3 last year would have to be the reveal that they were working on a new Pokemon game for the Switch. Let's be real, a Pokemon game on the Switch is not only a massive system seller, but it's answering one of the loudest cries in the gaming industry, a Pokemon game on a console. If going by Game Streak's words are correct, the game should be due sometime around the fall this year, and that is very exciting. The Nintendo Switch has given plenty of exclusives in its first year, and including a mainline Pokemon game in their second year of the Switch's life cycle certainly isn't going to hurt. Out of all the games coming for the Switch in 2018, I'm picking up Pokemon first without a doubt and I can't wait to try Pokemon for the first time. It seems like we've known about Shadow of the Tomb Raider for like a year now, but it still has yet to be revealed. Square Enix has promised the game's announcement is imminent, even going as far as to tease the name Shadow, so it's inevitable the game's reveal is just right around the corner. Seeing as I absolutely love the game since the 2013 reboot, I see no reason this game won't be just as good. Yes, the developers of Shadow will not sadly be Crystal Dynamics this time, instead it'll be ADOS Montreal, but I remain optimistic that the game lies in good hands. It's crazy that I'm this excited for a game that I have seen nothing more than just a logo for, but to me, Tomb Raider games are always a blast to play through, and I look forward to doing so once again in 2018 with Shadow. Media Molecule hasn't dropped the game since Tearaway, but the company really hasn't been at its peak to me personally since they did the Little Planet series back on the PS3. I'll admit, I never really was intrigued by Dreams initially. The game felt very bland and I didn't care for the art style. For the longest time, I wanted them to go back to Little Planet, a stable franchise they were good at and possibly make a fourth installment for. Recently though, with more and more footage and information coming about the game, I'm getting very excited for the game's release. Media Molecule games are so unique and really only they can deliver the type of games they make. 
James for sure stands out among all the Sony exclusives coming out in 2018, or rather 2018's lineup of games overall, and I can't wait to try the beta when it launches in 2018. While well, we have gotten a slew of great Batman games over the years thanks to Rocksteady's Arkham series, Spider-Man hasn't seen a solid installment in years. This has me very excited for Spider-Man PS4. The last great Spider-Man game was Spider-Man 2 on the PS2, so it's hopeful thinking that this one will knock it out of the park, and from what we've seen, it has potential to do so. My only worries at this moment for the game is a bland open world like usual, and some things with the combat, but everything else looks promising. Giving the Spider-Man property to a respectable studio like Insomniac was a great idea, especially since they made Sunset Overdrive a great open world game filled with fun action, which, you know, that kind of reminiscence of Spider-Man, and you can see why people are extremely excited for Spider-Man PS4. I'm still not as convinced as many are already, but when looking at the lineup for 2018, Spider-Man just stands out to me and I can't wait to play it. It's been almost 5 years since GTA 5 launched on the PS3 and Xbox 360, and I can only hope the wait for Red Dead Redemption 2 will be worth it. Rockstar Games are the king of open world games in my opinion, with their ability to craft a balanced and fun open world with a great story as well. It kind of saddens me that it's taken this long to get a Rockstar game on the current generation consoles, but if their past work has anything to go by, the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 will stand out for sure in 2018. The sequel this time is going around to be a prequel. With that, it sure has a lot of things to work with. Who knows, knowing Rockstar, this game will probably somehow not even make it into 2018 and probably get pushed to 2019 somehow, but if it does make 2018, rest assured, I'm very excited. No place for a boy. You must be a warrior. But not everyone is bad. Mother always said to be open to those who can help. Who you were before doesn't matter. This boy is not your past, he is your son, and he needs his father. Alright, I can go on and on and on and why I'm looking forward to God of War so much, but just knowing this, it is easily the game I'm looking forward to in 2018 the most, and with good reason. The game just checks so many boxes for me. From what we've seen, which is quite a bit at this point, the game has promising gameplay and combat. While I still can't speak much about the story, which I'm kind of glad they're keeping a secret, it seems like the game has a clear direction of where it's going with. For the past couple conferences, it just seems like Sony Santa Monica is the most confident, always managing to get me more excited for God of War each time they show it. We're in the final months before the game's early 2018 date, and while we still don't have a date, I'm still very much looking forward to God of War, and I could easily see it being my game of the year 2018. But just know this, I haven't been this excited for a game since Uncharted 4 back in 2016. So yeah, I think we can all safely agree 2018 is going to be a stellar year. In fact, I'd have to say I haven't been this excited for a year since 2013. If even half the games can perform as well as I hope they do, this year, when looked back on, will be something special. Of course, like everything nowadays, the list will probably be somehow quite controversial, but hey, I invite you to leave your list down in the comments down below. As per usual, I appreciate you for sticking to the end of the video. If you are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified for future videos. And that's it for me, I guess. As always, take care.